What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, I wanna talk about a $20,000 XRP. Now, if you think that sounds absolutely insane, well, make sure to stick around for this whole video because I wanna show you an excellent tweet thread by a guy named Chad Steingrabber where he goes through his max bullish theory for XRP. Now, guys, I went through this entire thing. It's absolutely incredible. It holds a whole bunch of amazing thoughts on how XRP really will transform the entire banking sector. Now, a lot of this is stuff I've never talked about on my channel before, and I actually learned a ton from from this tweet thread. In this video, I want to show you this tweet thread because I think it's really going to blow your mind, go over a whole bunch of new use cases for XRP, honestly, I've never talked about. And this is something, trust me, regardless of what you think of the price prediction, you are going to want to see the entire thing because this thing is absolutely outstanding. You are not going to want to miss this. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So guys, this isn't going to be a normal video. I'm actually going to have artificial intelligence read through this tweet thread for you. There are parts where it gets a little sloppy, but if you just go back and read what's on the screen, I'm going to have all the text going through the screen throughout this entire video. You'll fully understand what's trying to be communicated, but just trust me, you're going to want to try to get through this entire thing. It is going to give you such an interesting and in-depth understanding of XRP. I thought this tweet thread was absolutely incredible and make sure you go follow Chad on Twitter. He does an amazing job. He's constantly putting out content like this. I was going to read through this entire thing myself. I just thought I would do it a disservice. And I was also thinking about breaking it down and putting it in my own words, but I didn't think it was fair for Chad. I wanted to give him all the credit here. This thing was outstanding. So make sure you go follow him. I'll also make sure his Twitter is in the description of this video. But guys, listen up to this. I'm going to let this video go out with AI going going through this entire tweet thread, make sure to finish it. It's going to absolutely blow your mind. The Chad Stein grabber theory, the road to a $20,000 XRP. I'm going to tell you a story and I'll spin it so that all you need is an interest to learn what's in store for all of us. Grab a drink, grab a snack and let's take a ride. Let's start with some financial housekeeping with three basic principles that determines the value of an asset. First, supply and demand, with small demand you'll be left with a supply of assets that have little value. The opposite, you'll have skyrocketing prices. Second, market appreciation, this is the willingness to pay a price for an asset of perceived value. Third, limited assets, the Mona Lisa is valuable because it's the only one, we can make copies, or what we call, derivatives, but we can't make more Mona Lisas. Also, because of its importance to society, we place on it a high price. That value is in our minds. Now for those new to XRP let's establish some facts. XRP has a limited supply of 100 billion. Each ledger transaction destroys or burns a small portion of XRP to validate its transfer. Therefore the asset is deflationary. You can issue any other asset on the ledger as IOUs. XRP is dirt cheap today because almost all trading is a small public pool of existing money that's essentially wash trading back and forth through retail. The public supply is important because that determines the price. Circulating supply is king. Today XRP's market cap is $18 billion. But wait, that doesn't mean there is actually $18 billion of money that has been put into XRP. There's far less as the market cap is just a reflection of the current value anyone is willing to pay. We've been told the story that banks will send dollars to public exchanges, convert to XRP and then convert back out as something else. This is Ripple Software ODL, on-demand liquidity. This won't necessarily drive up the price. ODL is really for the little guys, leveling the playing field for small banks and money transmitters to eventually eliminate dependency of correspondent banking to major banks allowing competition to flourish. ODL is for the minor leagues. Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, ECT, will not use ODL as we know it. If you think Chase is going to rely on Kraken or Binance to source public exchanges for trillions of dollars in global transfers, I have a nice igloo in Florida to sell you. This is where it gets interesting because the road to $20,000 XRP involves privacy. They've been very clear and honest with us, XRP was never meant for public retail trading. We were the pitchers in warm-up practice before the game begins. Ready for the big leagues? 
Banks require privacy, that's not gonna change anytime soon. Let me be clear, no bank on earth will expose their internal ledger transactions to public. The privacy is for you, for the bank to conduct business and create loans without prying eyes. Welcome to the Hotel California, you may check in anytime, but you may never leave. It's public that Bank of America has a patent with XRP wallets integrated into their back-end systems. So, if they don't use ODL, what's up with the digital wallets? Private XRP ledgers. XRP will become a reserve currency asset. Remember from Ripple, banks holding XRP, that's the holy grail, remember XRP can issue any other type of asset, CBDCs can be issued. That means Bank of America will create Bank of America coin on the XRPL. Bank of America will create a private ledger and hold XRP as a reserve asset like how a central bank will hold gold as a backing asset. Bank of America creates Bank of America coin, an XRP derivative internally for tracking balances in user accounts, you see dollars in your account. Internally Bank of America BOA can do whatever they want, as long as they hold a balance of XRP. They are not going to send their XRP anywhere, just like a gold reserve. In fact, they will seek to increase their balance to grow their business. So how do they send their money to another bank? Enter stage right, institutional grade liquidity providers, IGLPs, COF Polysign COF. This is also a private XRP ledger that holds a massive basket of different digital assets. The IGLPs also hold a balance of XRP because they are the third-party exchange that requires a transfer of the issued IOU derivative into another IOU derivative. Why? Chase Bank will never hold Bank of America coin. This would be called counterparty risk. So, Bank of America coin is sent to an IGLP, uses XRP to transfer into JP Morgan coin, because the IGLP holds all of them, Bank of America coin, JP Morgan coin, Wells Fargo coin, etc. That dollar amount of the JP Morgan coin is sent to Chase Bank and shows up as dollars in your account. Have you spotted the magic trick yet? They need XRP, it's now a business dependency and just like gold, they're going to go beast mode on hoarding what now is the most valuable asset on earth. The entire global transfer of money depends on it. And you'll never see it. Think of it as a digital arms race where every bank, every IGLP will hoard XRP to increase their balance sheets. The majority of XRP escrowed at Ripple will never see the light of day. When they run out of OTC, over-the-counter, options, what's next? The public supply. The circulating public supply of XRP on crypto exchanges is far less than people realize. A lot of XRP has been lost, remember Banker Mellon held a billion XRP and died, his keys lost forever. There is about 20-ish billion on the exchanges. What do we have? Low supply. The banks, when they are ready, are coming for the public XRP supply and once they have it, it's gone. Like as in, forever. You'll never see it again. So now imagine the banks and IGLPs, overnight, begin panic buying the public XRP market supply, an institutional FOMO run on the order books with multi-multi billions of dollars hitting like a tsunami the likes we've never seen. What happens when you wipe out the public order books in a matter of hours, 0.30 C XRP gone? 40 c XRP gone, 0.50 c XRP gone, $1 XRP gone, and when that happens, other exchanges start arbitrage to the highest price, private wallets transfer into cash out. At that point, they're not coming back to dump on the public market for profits. That's peanuts compared to the business of global money transfers in the trillions. Guess what? I've just been talking about the USA banks. The global US dollar money supply in circulation is somewhere around 40 trillion. To be in the 1% of public XRP holders you need somewhere around 70k XRP. There's only a few billion on the exchanges for public retail trading. Now add the rest of the world's banks. Add the world's billionaires who will want their cut. Add the quadrillion plus derivative market. Think about this real hard, what happens when that public circulating supply drops to only a billion? What's next? It's going sub-billion into the hundreds of millions. What's next? Only 100 million in public supply. What's next? Sub 100 million public circulating supply. What happens next? 21 million circulating public supply left for the rest of us. We all know what a supply cap of 21 million means, right? One last thing, notice I didn't tell you what price XRP would be at. You had that thought all by yourself.